Welcome. I'm Mingzhe from Tsinghua University. Here, I'll talk about the pipeline of collecting and analyzing coverage in fuzzing and how we accelerate it. Coverage guided fuzzing is an automated testing technique that attempts to detect bugs and vulnerabilities in programs. Generally, it contains the following steps. First, the father selects an input from the corpus. With the chosen input, the father mutates it to generate many new inputs. Next, the father executes the target program with mutated inputs and collects coverage statistics of these runs. Finally, the father saves input to corpus if it can trigger bugs or find new program states. Coverage guidance is important to improve fuzzing efficiency because it helps to prioritize interesting inputs in the corpus and discard inputs that do not reach any new program states. Generally speaking, the coverage guideline of fuzzers contains of two stages, collecting coverage at the wrong time and analyzing for interesting inputs after the completion of executions. Let's take the classic father American Fuzzy Lock, for example. At compile time, AFL clown allocates an array of 60k kilobytes to store coverage as 8-bit counters. For each basic block of the target program, AFLAS generates a random number ID as its identifier, then inserts a call to AFL maybe log ID at the beginning. At runtime, AFL maybe log updates the coverage counters to collect edge coverage. The logging function hashes the identifier of the previously executed and the current block. Then uses the hash as an index into the counter array to increment the pointed counter by one. After the target program completes execution, AFL reads the coverage counters to classify them into a bitmap of features. Here, each 8-bit counters with non-zero value is mapped to 8 possible features. The features are represented as a bitmap, where each feature corresponds to one of the 8 bits inside the 8-bit counter. The classified result is written back to the coverage region. With the edge transfer counts classified as a bitmap, AFL scans the database of unknown program states to detect new program behaviors. If a previously unknown edge transfer is triggered, then the input will be labeled as new coverage. If a known edge transfer has different features, then it will be marked as a new path. Otherwise, the current input is discarded. After the scan, AFL removes the newly discovered features by updating the database. Despite the usefulness of coverage, introducing coverage pipelines imposes overhead in both the target program and the father. For the target program, fathers insert instrumentation code for coverage collection at each basic block. The assembly presented shows the original and improved method for AFL's instrumentation. Here, the collection code saves the current register context, loads the best address for counter region, computes the counter index, updates the corresponding counter value, restores the context, and transfers control back to the program logic. The code is executed frequently and it can contain dozens of instructions encoded in around 100 bytes. Furthermore, modern processors use a multi-tier cache subsystem to reduce memory latency. Because the collection code updates the counter array, it adds many loads and stores to the instruction stream. This memory accesses stress the memory subsystem by competing with the program logic for instruction cache. The extra memory latency reduces the overall execution speed of programs. The overhead also affects fuzzer's performance in coverage analysis. The feature above presents the breakdown of execution costs for AFL fuzz. It first mutates the input. After the execution completes, 
It classifies the coverage bitmap, scans the bitmap for new coverage, and resets the memory for the next run. In other words, to detect new program states, AFL Father spends 84% of its valuable CPU time on the coverage pipeline. However, the high CPU time results in low yields. As the first row of the table shows, 98% of the processed counters were zero. This could not provide any help in discovering new inputs. The sparsity of coverage array implies that skipping zero counters quickly during coverage analysis can be a major performance boost. As the second row shows, although 99.997% of the inputs did not trigger any new program behavior, AFL still performed many computations. The first pass converted the coverage to a bitmap, and the second pass will read it to compare with the database of unknown program states. Basing on these observations, we present RIF to reduce the overhead in coverage pipeline. First, to reduce coverage collection logic in target programs, we perform static analysis to pre-compute the counter index that will be accessed at runtime. Additionally, we fix the counter base address with linker tweaks. With the counter address available at compile time, most instrumentation sites only contain single instructions. Second, to accelerate core analysis logic in fathers, we add a hot path which handles the most common cases. The simplified logic on hot path allows hardware assisted acceleration, and it only falls back to the slow path on 0.003% of cases in general. To achieve single instruction instrumentation, Using block coverage is a natural choice, since we cannot perform much computation. However, block coverage cannot represent all the information provided by edge-level coverage. As the figure shows, given 10, 7, 4, 10 as a hit count for four basic blocks, there can be at least two interpretations for edge coverage. Sometimes, Block coverage can encode enough information to compute edge coverage afterwards. In this example, if we record the hit count of basic block A and B as X and Y, then we can obtain the hit count of edge AC as X minus Y. However, this requires extra computation at farther side. Generally, RIF follows the block-based design but it uses stack analysis to enhance it. First, the instrumenter of RIF scans the program to enumerate all possible control transfers. Usually, the source and target of the edge is predefined. Here, RIF scans the control flow graph to determine if there's a basic block whose hit count can represent the hit count of this edge. In this scenario, we can safely use a block's hit count as a replacement. Otherwise, the edge is broken into a dummy block, and the dummy block is instrumented to record the hit count. There are also corner cases where the jump target is unknown at compile time. For completeness, RIF also handles such scenario such as function pointer. Before the control transfer instruction, RIF inserts instructions to store the source block ID into a thread local variable. Similarly, RIF identifies the control transfer targets. For example, functions have their addresses taken. RIF inserts instructions at the beginning to fetch the source block ID and increase the counter. Recall that most counters and almost all executions result in no fighting discovery and we can see the importance of accelerating the simple but frequent cases. RIF introduces two new stages to handle the hot path. At stage zero, RIF scans the bitmap to skip useless chunks of counters which were never updated by the target program. Since the comparison is extremely simple, it can be executed in parallel by fully utilizing the processor's ALUs with single instruction multiple data instructions. For example, 
AVX512 is an instruction set proposed by Intel for almost 10 years and is widely supported on server processors. It can compare 64 lengths of 8-bit integers in 4 clock cycles. The positions of non-zero lengths are computed as a mask and passed to stage 1. At stage 1, Reef classifies the non-zero lengths of counters into a bitmap and checks for new program states. Since most executions contribute no features, the logic of this stage is rather simple, too. Only when a new interesting input is discovered does Reef transfer to stage 2, where the original algorithm runs a series of complex computations. We enhance AFL and MOPT with Reef to evaluate our work. Inside the figures, lower bars indicate faster time to achieve the same coverage as the baseline fathers, and the red bar denotes a time, an average, to reach the final coverage of AFL and MOPT running for 24 hours. Reef's improved versions only require 6.23 and 6.82 hours respectively. For individual programs, the improvements are consistent. Even for the worst program, FreeType 2 on AFL and LabGPEG from MOPT, Reef still reached the final coverage 2.1 and 0.8 hours before the baseline versions. The speedup in coverage pipeline also brought improved overall fighting performance. On average, Reef improved the coverage of AFL and MOPT by 4.96% and 6.25% respectively. The improvement is consistent for individual programs. Among all the 28 experiments, RIF is the best for 27. For fair evaluation, we further perform micro-batch marking on coverage collection and coverage analysis code. The figure in left shows the execution time of target programs compared to the uninstrumented version marked as a red bar. Here we can see that Reef reduces the footprint of instructions down to one instruction per set. On average, the coverage collection of Reef only requires 8.4% more time to execute, while AFL clone requires 206% more time. In other words, Reef improves the instrumentation performance by 23 times. The figure in right shows the coverage analysis time with different hardware acceleration schemes. Compared to the original scholar-based algorithm marked as a red bar, the vectorized versions only require 22% and 17% of the wall clock time to do the same. To recap, we first observed that coverage collection and analysis significantly affect the speed of funding and we further break down the cost of instrumentation and analysis code. Next, we design RIF to accelerate coverage collection with single instruction instrumentation and accelerate coverage analysis with hot path vectorization. Finally, we implement RIF on popular fathers, including AFL and MOPT. The coverage processing parts of our work has already been integrated into AFL++. That's all. Thank you. Any questions?